Okay, weight and mass. I talked a little bit about this. Weight, of course, the force due to gravity. Mass is the amount of matter. So again, we talk about mass, intrinsic property of any object. For most objects, you know, typical objects that we will handle in this course and come across, the mass is a function of the number of you know, particles, protons, neutrons, electrons. It's normal matter. Um, although we talk about other types of mass, uh, such as dark matter and dark energy, creating gravity, um, again, in terms of classical physics, we're really focused on uh, the mass that, that we normally can hold and touch and is composed of normal atoms. Gravity is a fundamental force, so it is a field force. It acts at a distance. Uh, anything with mass will put a force on anything else with mass. Again, this is Newton's universal law of gravitation, and it is the most general expression for the force due to gravity. It has a very small constant right here, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 uh, newtons uh, per kilogram squared, uh, meter squared. Actually, it's newtons meter squared per kilogram squared. And then, of course, we have the product of the two masses and the distance squared. So the only time that we're really going to get a significant force here, if you think about this, with such a small number here is balancing it with a very large mass. So comparing the gravitational force between two people, 80 kilograms and 70 kilograms, two meters apart, social distancing, um, you come up with an incredibly small uh, 93 nano newtons of, of force uh, between them. So this is completely undetectable compared to the other forces that we feel. And thus, everyday objects will not interact um, via the gravitational force through any appreciable amount. Again, to make this significant, this gravitational force significant, one of these masses has to be very large. And for most of our examples, most of the case studies that we do, we use Earth, we use objects on the surface of the Earth, so the mass of the Earth, which is about 10 to the uh, 24 kilograms, goes here, and that balances out pretty nicely against the um, gravitational constant. It is important to understand that this R is not the distance that we are from the Earth. That is the distance between our center of mass and the center of the Earth. So actually, this number can be quite large. We're talking about, you know, approximately a radius of 6,000 kilometers. You know, we're talking about, you know, 6 times 10 to the, you know, roughly 10 to the 6 uh, meters down here that we're squaring. So again, really large mass is needed here in, to, in order to produce any appreciable force. Now, we have been showing weight to be the product of the mass of an object times the acceleration of gravity for Earth. Obviously, we know where the mass comes from. It's the amount of matter that the object has. Uh, right there. G, however, comes from the uh, properties of Earth in terms of how much mass does it have and also how big it is. So, if we want to calculate the acceleration of gravity for any large body, we have to take into account the overall mass of the body. Here it's represented by m2. The radius of the body, so actually as it gets bigger and less dense for a given amount of mass, the acceleration of gravity goes up. Okay, and of course there's the acceleration of gravity constant. So you can calculate g based on the Earth's mass and its radius, but actually Earth's mass has been calculated based on the surface gravity and the radius that we know. And again, g comes out to be 9.8. Um, the acceleration of gravity does decrease as we go to higher altitudes, but it's really not appreciable in terms of the change. At the surface, it's 9.8 or 1g. Uh, even out by the International Space Station, which orbits above the atmosphere, the acceleration of gravity is still close to 90%. You say, well, how come the people are weightless? That's a totally different thing. They're actually in free fall going around the Earth, and we'll talk more about that later on. The Hubble Space Telescope orbits a little bit higher, so it experiences a little bit less gravitational force. If you go out one additional Earth radius, 
the acceleration of gravity drops to one quarter because this is a one over r squared. It's an inverse square relationship between the force and uh, the distance. Um, we usually use 9.8 for the acceleration of gravity. It does vary if you're at the North Pole. The acceleration of gravity is a little bit higher. It's actually 9.83 meters per second squared because the pole is closer to the center of the Earth than the equator. If you're at the equator, it's a little bit less than 9.8, 9.78, because you not only have the greater distance, as the Earth spins, it actually flattens out a little bit, the greater the distance between the equator and the center of the Earth, there's also a centrifugal effect that takes place. But again, using 9.8, um, even though the radius does vary a little bit, and there's some other effects. That's pretty effective in calculating the weight. Um, again, weight is proportional to mass. Generally, if we're just treating objects near the surface of the Earth, the only thing that will affect the object's weight in our calculations will be the mass of the object in question. Double the mass, you're doubling the weight. Quintuple the mass, and you're talking about five times as much weight. In force diagrams, we usually uh, use a vector at the center of the mass of the object to talk about weight. We'll either use Fg or, or W in this case for weight. And again, essentially, the um, entire mass of the object is being pulled down by, by Earth's gravity, but it almost behaves like it's acting at the center of mass of the, of the object or the average position of all the masses. We'll talk more about that in the later chapters when we start talking about things like torque and moment of inertia. Um, again, uh, the weight typically will line up the weight with the y-axis. In this case, we've actually rotated the axis. So in some problems, you may even have to resolve the weight into an x and a y component. But again, um, you know, the weight is typically taken to be uh, pulling down in the horizontal direction, because that's the direction of your acceleration of gravity. What is your weight on other planets? Well, it, whatever you weigh on Earth, let's say 100, um, I don't know if that's 100 kilograms of uh, mass, which would be, you know, not the same as weight. Well, let's say 100 pounds. Let's use 100 pounds. Um, although that's quite light. Most people are quite a bit heavier than that. But anything that weighs 100 pounds on Earth would be slightly less heavy on Venus. Um, about a third of the mass on Mars and Mercury, so you have about 38% of the, the, the weight. 16.6% of the weight on the Moon. Um, now this is a little bit tough because Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, and Jupiter have no solid surface. But if you could stand on the clouds, you'd weigh about the same on Neptune, about 19% heavier. Uranus, you'd be a little bit lighter. Saturn, you'd weigh about the same that you weigh on the Earth. And Jupiter, you'd weigh, well, 2.34 times more. It'd be very difficult to stand on those cloud tops if they were solid. Uh, again, Pluto, less. Um, Mercury, by the way, has about the same gravitational pull as Mars. Um, even though Mars is about twice the mass. And the reason for this is we go back to that equation again and we see that G depends on R and M. Um, the mass is smaller on Mercury, but um, the radius is smaller too, and the two balance out to uh, give the two planets an equal gra surface gravity. Of course, the heat on the sun would vaporize you in an instant, but um, even if you could survive the heat, the gravitational pull would kill you. Um, so again, here are the acceleration of gravity on different planets. It depends again on what the planet's mass is and what the radius is. And in fact, we use the acceleration of objects orbiting these different planets to actually determine the mass. We've never put any of these planets on a scale. So how do we measure how massive they are? Well, that's really looking at something orbiting the planet and then basing 
the acceleration of that orbit, that would be g, uh, we know the gravitational, universal gravitational constant, we can measure the radius of the planet, so we can just solve for the planet's mass. And again, here are different weights at different places, if you weigh 150 pounds, what you'd weigh on each of the different planets.